Hello everyone, it's me, Dilly Sims. Welcome back to my channel. Today is Speed Build Sunday, the day of the week where I build whatever I want because I can. So for this week, I decided to take inspiration from the TV show that was on, I want to say the 90s, and then also the Netflix revival of the TV show, Tales of the City. Um, if you do not know what Tales of the City is, I don't know how to describe it, because because it used to be a TV show, like I said, so I have no idea what happened in the TV show back in the 90s, but I just watched the Netflix one, and the Netflix version is so good and wholesome. Like, it was such a really nice, wholesome TV show. I feel like it was very, um, it was very similar to Curse Folk, as in, it's a lot of, like, you know, LGBTQ plus people with, obviously, with the struggles that we have to go through every single day, or, yeah. But I like that A, it takes place in, in San Francisco. I like it, I like that part specifically because San Francisco is just literally a hop up and a skip away, not really, because it's a two hour car ride, if you're not traffic. So it's kind of a hop, jump, and skip away, but you know, depending on traffic. And, oh well. Yeah. I really liked it because it was wholesome. And I feel like, oh, and because of, well, wholesome, obviously, and because I feel like it is more easily relatable to me. Because when Queer's Folk came out, it was like an, it was like a late 90s thing. I want to say we went into the early 2000s, too. So, I mean, I wasn't an out gay boy at the time in my life, unlike Tales, of, un unlike Tales of the City now, which, I mean, the Netflix version I watched, obviously, and it takes place today, it doesn't take, it doesn't, like, continue from the 90s, they're not still stuck in the 90s, they're, it's 2018, 19, what year are we in, 19, it's 2018 in the TV show, so they deal with things that... I would have to deal with nowadays, which I really do enjoy. I like to see that. And that's what what I like is that it's very relatable. And I don't know if you guys are huge fans of musicals, but if you know Mean Girls the musical, the actress, the original actress, because they recasted her. And I think it was because she took up this job on Tales of the City. But the actress who originally played Regina George, the Asian girl, She's in this. She's in this and she is so funny. Her like ultimate goal in life is to be a social media influencer. Her and she has like a twin brother, which them together are the funniest duo ever. I love them. They're so funny. 10 out of 10 do recommend watching Tales of the City on Netflix. If you've already watched it, let me know what you think. If you are gonna watch it, or if you do watch it, let me know what you think. I would love to hear your thoughts on it, because I feel like it was very wholesome. It wasn't like a, oh no, there's bullying and all this. It was just like, everyone's happy, and like, no one's really being bullied for being gay, you know? Which I, which is a nice you know, turn. It's not like the same, I don't want to say monotonous, but like the same monotonous story, where it's like, the person's bullied because they're different. Yeah. Which, I mean, it's, it's a part, that is also a part of, like, being a gay person, being an, well, LGBTQ plus identifying person. You do get bullied for that, and they're done that. So, I mean, I understand that that's a part of it, but I feel like Hollywood and Hollywood just keeps recreating the same story, where it's just like, it's a bullying story at the end of the day. And it's about acceptance. But not this one. This one was very, like, wholesome and pure. And it was just like, we all love each other, and we all live in the same... It's an apartment, not a bed and breakfast, but I made this a bed and breakfast because creating an apartment would be awful with, like, all the rooms. Yeah. But they all live in an apartment together, and they're all, like, happy, and they don't, like, hate each other or, like... Treat each other 
each other poorly because of their preferences, which is such a nice story. Like, that's a really good story that you don't hear too often. Especially, or even, especially for Chain in the Media. You don't get that at all. Ever, really. So, I'm, I'm happy that my friend Michael turned me on to this, because 10 out of 10 do recommend. I thought about creating, like, the characters, but I don't know, I don't feel like I am that channel that creates characters. Like, I don't think I create well, I do create sims, but I don't make videos of, like, create a sims. I thought about doing this one. I might do one for tomorrow. Because I know if I'm gonna edit a Disney Princess Challenge. I've been so bad lately with editing videos. It's, it's been like this. I have two channels. So let me specify this. I have two channels. If you didn't know, I started a vlog channel. And I do this, and then I also have my vlog channel. I have been so bad at uploading on both. I've been so bad at uploading on both channels. It's ridiculous. I don't have time for anything now, it seems, because I am a sub I was gonna say substitute. I'm a summer school teacher, so I feel like I have no time to do anything. I used to have a schedule where it was, well, this is my dream schedule. Because I only have one, two, actually two videos now out on my vlog channel. So this would be my dream schedule. I used to have a dream schedule that I uploaded to on a normal basis. But my dream schedule would be, I, Monday would be uh, edited uh, Disney Princess Challenge. Then Friday would be the cult. Jeffree Star's cult video that I have, which is doing pretty well actually, I think because I put, I attached a celebrity to it, like Jeffree Star, it made it, and more people are viewing it, which is so funny, it's such a funny, like, ridiculous series, but I, I love it. Uh, so that would be on Friday, and then Sunday would be a special. And Saturday... Saturday would be my vlog, Sunday would be a speed build, or my vlog would fall on a Sunday, either one, depending on time. That would be my ultimate dream schedule, but because I've been teaching Monday through Friday and then working Saturday and Sunday at my retail job, it's so hard, it's so hard to just like exist and live and function, and then still like go out with my friends and do things. It's been so, you don't even know how difficult it's been. I, like, I love my kids, I love my students, but I'm gonna be so tired, so tired. I come home from school every day, and I start lesson plans, and I fall asleep. I fall asleep almost every single day because I am so tired. It's not, it's not a fun time. It's not a fun time at all. And uh, then... Uh, you know, you miss out on stuff because the time that you spent sleeping, you were, you could have been doing lesson planning or doing anything else, editing a video, recording a video, because you record a video first to edit. Yeah, so it's just been a, it's been a, my life lately has been a ride, and I love teaching, like, I really love teaching. But it's just like, it's really carving into like my social media time and creating content for my content creating time. Which, I get it, like, more likely than not, this is not going to be my my job creating videos. That's probably not going to be my job long term because I mean, you know how many people have vlogs and YouTube channels? So many. So I mean, I know real like reality check. This is probably not what you're going to do for the rest of your life, Billy. Wow, that's that's a a wake up call. But that's okay. Because it's just part of life, so I need to focus on, like, jobs that will actually get me money. So, yeah. I don't know where I was going with that, actually. I feel like I had more to say, but I couldn't be. Yeah, whatever. It's just been, it's really just been probably into my social media time, which is, er, excuse me, content creating time, which is okay because, like, I'm getting money. Being a teacher pays pretty well, but... This is an outlet for me to de-stress, and I don't, I never have time to do it. This and taking bubble baths are the two things that I use to de-stress, because if not, then I'm stressed. Because my
My kids are so active every single day. They are so active. They wear me out. And they are so, like, I love them. Like, I love all my kids, but they wear me out. Teaching is not for the weak-hearted. It is not for people who want it easy in life, because teaching is not easy. If you think it's easy, you've never taught. Let me just say that. Yeah. But this is my last week of summer school teaching, and then I'll go back to my retail job. So hopefully I'll be getting more content up for you guys. More vlogs, more all of those things, because right now, yeah, no. That's not happening. And happy Pride, everyone. I know everybody's just getting over Pride right now. It's like when I'm recording this, it's like, what, 7.30? Yeah, because I just got off of work. And now I'm recording, like, I just got off work and then I came home to record this because I wanted to have a speed boat. I don't want to miss out on the speed boat because I love recording, I love talking, and they do kind of well, so not that they, they're going to make me, con or they're going to make me money. I don't get monetized. Yeah. I don't make money off of any of my anything that I say, actually. So, it's not like I I came home because I'm like, yeah, let me make this video because it'll make me money. No, 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 no. It's just because I really like doing this. I feel like my voice is cracking, but that's because, I don't know, I've been either sick or allergies or something, and maybe it's just my kids. My kids are giving me diseases. But I just feel like I'm congested a lot lately, and I'm so sorry I should have said this earlier before I started recording. But yeah, normally my voice isn't like this. It's more like high-pitched and happy. But I feel like I'm hitting puberty all over again. Yeah. Oh, and you're not... I, when I edited this, I made an executive decision to not show the process of furnishing the, the guest rooms. Like the downstairs where there's a living room and everything, that is, I want to say, the sweet old lady who lives in this house and rents rooms out. Like I'm, I imagine it's like the sweet old lady who is very eccentric, you know, and has like, is like a cool grandma, like a really cool grandma and loves, and loves the kids, like just loves them. So, it probably has like some really wacky, fun colored hair. That's why I imagine we rent this house. Or, yeah. Rent it out, Airbnb. Today it would be like an Airbnb. So, yes. Like she, that's why her, the only space you get to see me furnish is downstairs. Because I don't want to say I do a great job, but I feel like I do a great job. It's very out there, the furniture is mismatched because I didn't want it to look like it was matched. Like, great kitchen, like a good kitchen space. I really, I really like the first floor. The first floor, I feel like if you made a few more renovations, you could make this into a really nice mansion. Like, the kitchen's a good space, the dining room's a good space, the living room's a good space, and then you have all those extra bedrooms. It's, this could easily be a mansion if you try to. Yeah. Oh, and I already said happy Pride. I made a decision this year to not go to Pride. And I'm going to vent because I'm pretty sure this person does not follow me on my channel. I'm going to name her. Oh, Katie. No, oh, Caitlin. That's what I've been calling all the people who cross me. Caitlin. So. invited me I'm gonna go to her wedding so I can't go to pride this year and then I got an invitation to the bridal shower and I bought a gift and I went to the shower and I had a great time 
and it was great. Like, what? Um, January came, came along. I didn't get an invite. That's okay. February came along. Still no invite. That's okay. April came along, and I was like, hmm, interesting. May came along. No invite, and I was like, okay, this is ridiculous. June came along. I never got an invitation to her wedding. I got to save the date. I went to her bridal shower, and I... It was, yeah. It was ridiculous. I never got an invitation to her wedding. Like, I got to save the date. The save the date does not have a time or a place for the wedding. So, I never went. So, and because I was really banking on getting an invitation, I never planned a costume or anything fun to wear for Pride. So, I... Yeah. And then, I didn't make plans with anyone to go to Pride with, because I wanted to go with people, because I don't want to go by myself. Because I'm not going to drive two hours away to be in a city full of people that I don't know. So, yeah. Caitlin basically ruined my drive. I mean, I still had a lot of fun because there was a cool. There is was close last night. And there was a club that was really, really popular. The town over, and it was really popular. But the lease was up, and the owners of the lease wanted, or excuse me, yeah, the lease people wanted the club to pay a million dollars to renew the lease. That was just a strategy because they didn't want that club there anymore. So, the club owner said, no, we're not gonna do that. So they had an exclusive VIP party that you had to get on a guest list for. And since I was, my friends were gonna go, like my very close friends, actually one of them. I said my friends, but like a very close friend of mine was gonna go so and I again the invitation or the wedding never happened so it's not like I was planning on going to the wedding because I never got an invitation and then pride I had no one to go with so I was like hey would you mind getting me on the guest list and they were like yeah we'll see what we can do I got on the guest list and I went and I had such a great time like such a great time it was so packed. Like we went Friday, Friday night and Saturday night. Saturday night was the last night it was packed. Like you would go onto the dance floor. They have two dance floors with two different DJs. Inside and out. So we went to the outside one because it was so hot inside. If you stood and we weren't even in the center of the dance floor. But we were, you know, on the dance floor, and there were so many people that you wouldn't you couldn't really dance. You just stand there and other people dance around you and push you around. So you're kind of dancing because people are pushing you around. It was so lit. <laughs> it was ridiculous. It was like so ridiculously crazy. I've never been in a bar or club like that. Where you have, it was pushing through people was ridiculous. I saw three people get ex escorted out last night. It was, like, just, it was an experience. I was so happy that I went, because it was very sex in the city to me. It was, like, we got on the very exclusive guest list to the, to the it party, you know? It was so crazy. Oh, and the bar. Both bars, because they have two bars, one inside and one outside. The bars were packed full of people. The bar, like, a, so it's, it's a long bar. Both inside and out. But across the entire bar, the line was like four or five people to get. Like you had to wait behind like four or five people to get to the front of the line. It was crazy. Like so crazy. Um, like I was so happy that I went because that was an expensive experience that I'm never going to get again. But I'm so happy that I went because now I can brag that I was there for the very last night of the I got on the guest list. <laughs> like, I'm happy that I went, but at the same time, 
I've been trying to avoid social media because I feel like this year specifically, everyone and their mother went to Pride in San Francisco. That's not even a joke. Everyone. Everyone except me. Which is okay, it's fine, it's whatever. Like, it kind of really hurt my feelings. But that I didn't get invited to the wedding. Oh, and then she posted on on Facebook. Then she posted on Facebook like, Oh, I had such a great wedding. Thank you for everyone for attending. So, then I decided, because I'm a good person, I look such a good singer. I went on Facebook. I saw her post and I wrote, I hope you it was the wedding of your dreams. And then I sent some emojis, like the little like emoji, the dancing emoji, and then the bride and groom emojis. Yeah. My friends told me it was passive aggressive. I think I was just being nice. It's debatable. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think it was passive aggressive? I was just trying to be nice. Maybe I was being passive aggressive. Now that I think about it out loud, it was probably fast and aggressive. Whatever, I'm not gonna see her again. The only person I see is her dad. Frequently, because he works with me. So... Yeah, but I have no beef with her dad. I have beef with her. She ruined my pride. But, you know what? My mother, who's not like... She, when it comes to, like, me being gay, my mother's not like that. My number one fan. At all. In any shape, way, or form. It, it's more like... She doesn't like it, but she tolerates it type of thing. And I told her, like, I was so angry and hurt that I couldn't go. And you know what she did? She was like, okay, well, you know, because you couldn't go, what if, like, I chill a bottle of wine and we just, like, drink outside and kind of, like, celebration of it? And I was like, oh my god, that is the nicest thing you've ever done to me or for me, ever. I mean, yeah, I guess you paid for school and, like, me growing up and you gave me a good childhood, but this is the nicest thing you've ever literally done for me. <laughs> basically, because she's not like, but she'd much rather me just pretend I'm not gay, so it was a huge step for her, and I really loved it. Like, I was so happy that she did that. It really, it actually kind of made my pride. Even though I couldn't go, it kind of made my pride. Still kind of bitter that Caitlin didn't invite me, but I'm sorry to hear my day. I am getting close to the end of the video, guys, so let me know what you think of this build. Um, it, can, it can be found in the gallery by searching LGBTQ Bed and Breakfast. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, do all those funny YouTube things, and I'll catch all of you guys next time. Bye, everybody.